What's going on beautiful people? You might recall about a month ago, something like that. Anyway, I built a new tank for my German Blue Ram pair. Now I don't have good news. Unfortunately, the male one's passed away in the last week or so. And you know, look, it's massively disappointing. It's just one of those things. Rams are notorious for like getting this sort of sunken belly problem. So it's internal parasites basically. I treated the fish. Um, but and he was eating absolutely great but just got worse and worse and worse over the course of about two and a half weeks and eventually just passed away even though on that very day still eating but the good news is we have still got the female ram she's doing really really well actually colors are so vibrant still got that really pink belly as well which means that she's of breeding age um, so that's really nice to know and also the tank's looking pretty good as well so you remember we had that bad algae problem in here well it's all pretty much sort of sorted itself out um, just by regular water changing and doing maintenance and that sort of thing nice sort of solid green jungly look to this the amanos have been absolutely crucial in all of this now remember this um, this whole system had a filter in it that I had from a separate sort of tank so it's all cycled and everything so there's no water quality issue with the fish dying it's just it's just one of those things isn't it rams are notorious for it I, I think next time I buy rams I'm gonna buy several of each not on a tank this size it's, that's too small but like 60 centimeter I'm gonna buy several let them group up and whatever and pair up and then take some back afterwards uh, because you just never know like, I didn't know I put that many Amanos in here crikey there's like an army. Now they're definitely not breeding because Amano shrimp can't breed in fresh water. They need brackish water. Um, apparently it's a really hard process and as they grow, you have to increase or decrease the salinity. Oh, there's our female at the back. Come forward. Come on then, show yourself off. Show your colors. Come on then. <laughs> you coming? She's teasing us now, she's teasing us. You can come and show off. Don't be afraid. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna be getting her out in a minute. Let me tell you why. So she's in there on her own, a female, a beautiful specimen as well. Now you guys might remember that the dirted aquarium behind me has got a absolutely beautiful golden ram in it. Now I was looking for the female, you know, a female golden ram, couldn't find one anywhere, still can't find one anywhere. So I'm thinking, let's put them both together Hopefully they breed and we can see, like get some sort of German blue, electric blue, um, golden ram mix because the German blue in the other one, the female, it's got lots of like electric-y blue look to it. So it's all a bit, bit mutty, do you know what I mean? <laughs> now he's looking absolutely insane in here, so I definitely think he's gonna do well with a partner. His colors are intense. Here we go, look, look, look at that. He's gone so, so golden. I think it's because the, uh, the lighting has got a little bit less because we've got more and more plants in here now. And as a result, you know, the background goes darker, the fish tend to go darker as well. So yeah, look at that, whoa, <laughs> his colors are insane, aren't they? So he's got a nice big spiky dorsal fin. Now he's the male, there was a female in this one. The, the female died from this tank. That one was my fault. Um, I basically didn't realize the back pipe section was stuck under and she swam into the sort of inlet bit at the top there. Yeah, my, my fault, I should have checked, but a freak accident. Now the other one obviously isn't my fault, that's a parasite or something, I don't know. These things happen, you know? But I think if we can put the two of them in here, we've got a really good chance of some breeding. It'll be absolutely awesome to see, and I'll be excited to see the kind of babies they might have. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is catch this ram. I might have to tear the tank down a little bit, but I've got plans for this one anyway. Uh, without the ram in it, I just kind of feel like I'd like to start, start something new for different fish. I'm thinking the epistogramma pair that we've got up here, they'll go really good in there. Right, the strategy here then is gonna be just to take a scoop of water like that, hang it on the end, or just put it down. Yeah, that'll actually be easier. Put it there. <laughs> right, now I've got to try and catch this little thing. Where is it even, is it? Oh, right in the middle. It seems to like being in the middle, so hopefully that makes it easier. Oh no, <laughs> well I'm going for the double net method. It's still really difficult. This is one clever little fish, but she will not defeat me. Okay, the issue that I'm having now is that, like, I planted this so heavily that I can't even tell where she is. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to take the plants out. It's gonna be the only way. I can't see her anywhere, and I'm putting my hands around everything. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Right, that was like the longest fish catching episode ever. There she is, she's surprisingly very colored up, which is good. But I don't want to hang about. I'm gonna get her straight in, 
And um, yeah, hopefully you're all okay with that. Are you gonna be okay with that? I don't want any fighting. I just want baby making. If you two could just like have love at first sight, that would be fantastic. Oh look, is he sinner? No, he's not sinner. What am I talking about? <laughs> right, here we go. This is gonna be interesting. No movement yet. Go on, go on, come on, have a look. Go on then, in you go. What's it gonna be, what's it gonna be? Instant attack mode. I mean, it's only natural. They're gonna have like a little sniff around. I mean, the male's back in the front again. The female's just gonna hide for ages. That's just normal, isn't it? Like, you've just been put in a new setup. You're not gonna be everywhere straight away. I'm gonna give them five, come back, see how they're getting on. Now, whilst we're waiting for the female to settle in, this isn't the only tank on this row. Look, we've got the no filter bowl there and also the sparkling Grammy aquarium over the other side. Now, the bowl has been one of the best no filter tanks I've ever set up in terms of like the start. I've, I've done nothing to it. In fact, I stopped doing water changes pretty quickly as well because there was absolutely no need. The water testing showed that everything was great. And this is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. So the uh, the moss and pearl weed pebbles, wrapped pebbles that I put in the foreground, they're growing out absolutely loads. Um, it needs to trim back because it's getting like, it's not a foreground anymore, is it? It's just a bowl of plants, background plants, which was also pearl weed and Rotala rotundifolia. That all needs trimming right back as well. So, so in the middle there, I've got a Blixer Japonica. I don't know if you can make it out because um, all the other stuff is around it, but I need to tr basically trim everything right back. And there's enough plants in there for it not to be detrimental to water quality as well by removing uh, some of the plants. All the fish are super healthy and they seem to be loving the setup. Like in no way look do they look like a bowl is bad for them as the internet would suggest. Look, loving it. Scared fish don't sit there like that looking at me, do they? Look, I can do anything. I can come up to it move my hands around, they're not bothered. So the first job is to start the trim back on this moss and pearlweed carpet in the foreground here. The point of this is to keep it nice and short and uh, if you trim it regularly, the pearlweed, it actually goes horizontal rather than vert vertical. It will still try and grow vertical all the time. I mean, it is a weed at the end of the day, but if we just keep on top of it, it should continue to look good. It's one of those plants that you'd want to let go completely wild on a big, big tank, but in a small bowl, you've got to keep on top of it. Probably going to have to start doing this a lot more regularly. And again, that pretty much goes for the moss as well. Moss can creep up on you. You turn around, the whole tank's full. So yeah, again, tiny little scape, keep trimming it back. It'll actually grow even better from doing it this way as well. Really compact and just looking so lush. One of the more difficult things and often overlooked with a bowl is actually trying to get out the plants because they curve around under the lip. Like you can use your hands for a bit and then get a net to get out the smaller pieces. I found that the small shrimp nets work really well at sort of catching the edges. The square ones can be so awkward, so get yourself a shrimp net. So I found a really good way of trimming background stem plants that are like awkward to get to. Just grip the whole clump in your hand like that, widen out your scissors, go in there and just hack right down low look. And then you've just got a whole section of it come off neatly and all together. I mean, it doesn't really have to look like a shape in a small scape like this. A, it's gonna grow back in no time at all. And B, you can't really see it back there anyway with so many plants. <laughs> There we go, that foreground is looking nice and neat again. Oh, we've got shrimpies just dotted about in and amongst it. Just a second ago, they're all coming forward. There we go, look, there's loads of them all over it now. Pretty sure they're already breeding in here because I've seen some teeny, teeny, tiny ones as well that I didn't add, unless I did add and didn't realize. <laughs> but yeah, you can see now that Blixer Japonica, I want that to get nice and big. I want that as a focal point there. I'm gonna keep this so low down. The background plants have all been trimmed across. I left the Rotala rotundifolia because it's not too high yet. It's only just at the top of the water. And when it starts to loop over and block out the light, that's when I'll trim it back. But for now, the bowl is looking absolutely perfect again. Total maintenance time for the month, 10 minutes. So that is the bowl taken care of. It looks absolutely fantastic. That'll be good for a while now. But right next to it, we have got the sparkling Grammy tank. That also looks fantastic, but it does need some maintenance. It's one of those ones that I just sort of leave to its own devices, which is fine because it hasn't needed to you know, have anything done until now. This one here is probably the least amount of maintenance I've ever done on a planted tank. It's just perfect. I dosed the uh, substrate system quite lean, which meant that I never had algae, apart from a little bit of green dust algae, 
Um, I don't really dose the water column either unless I see some yellowing of the plants, which I haven't, so I haven't needed to. Yeah, just take a look at that. So the two things that are in here that are obvious are the moss that needs trimming and surprise, surprise, the pearl weed. Now, I didn't even put pearl weed in this tank. I didn't know it was there. That has all grown from basically the tiniest little shoot that I didn't realize was in there. <laughs> I've also added Blixa Japonica on this one as well because I had some left over and that's starting to grow really nicely now. You can see some of the sort of melted plants but this is all new growth and looking fantastic. What's interesting is like I said I kept all the dosing on this quite lean. I barely, I think I've added some liquid fertilizer to the API leaf zone like once. I haven't needed more than that because as you can see the plants are looking great. When I saw some of the Anubias turn a little bit yellow you can actually see what it was like that's where it was kind of yellowing. So I added some fertilizer, it's been absolutely perfect ever since. And you can tell that it's like so leanly dosed because if you look on the top here, these floating plants do not look great, do they? And they're still doing a job of pulling excess nutrients out of the water column, but they're just, I don't know, they're just quite drab. When you compare them with one of my plant storage tanks, this one here, I mean, look at how nice one of these ones look in comparison. So that's because this one's just full of aqua soil and um, you know, so there's, there's waste in there. There's lots of different things for the plants to have as food. And just look at this Cryptocoryne balansite. It's looking so good, isn't it? It's even come around this side. We've got it trailing right down there. It's a big plant now. It only had about three shoots when I put it in here. You can see it's sort of trying to grow out. Oh, no, you can't see. There we go. You can see it's sort of trying to grow out of the water as well so much back here it's such a nice plant it gives a really sort of natural river look i think and it also in a low tech tank like this it blocks out some of the light as well which you don't want huge amounts of light when you've uh, um, got no co2 and that sort of thing but yeah overall i'm really happy with this quick trim back now So I started out the trimming for this one using the little spring scissors. I don't know why I did that, because I know they're not good for trimming moss. <laughs> the thing is with them, they don't open very wide, so you end up trimming like one little piece of moss at a time and it can kind of look straggly. Whereas if we've got scissors that have got bigger blades, you can just sort of swoop over and keep a nice shape. Don't get me wrong though, the spring scissors really do have their place. They're very good at getting into tight areas and just trimming like individual stems. Because of that small opening at the front of the scissors, it means you can directly target specific stems in a whole group. But that's not what we need to do here. We need to trim back like a nice smooth section. In my opinion, that's how moss looks its best when you've got that sort of structured shape to it. So instead, I picked my lazy butt up and I went into the other studio and got my kitchen scissors. Now, I specifically bought these ones for trimming moss, but you know what it's like. You just grab what's to hand when you're trying to get on with something. No, get the right tool for the job. It makes it so much better. So you can see here, they've got nice little hoops for my fingers and they open nice and wide, but they're short enough to get into tight to reach spaces. Also, they're kitchen scissors, so they're really sharp as well. They make short work of this moss and it ended up looking so good. So glad I took the three seconds to go and get them. And as always, one of the most routine things, taking out the floating plants, there's way too many of them in here. And we need a little bit more light down below. I wanna get those stems popping a little bit more red. We've got some Rotala HRA in there. It looks good, don't get me wrong. It's more of an orangey yellow color. So if we increase that lighting by taking out the floating plants, it's gonna get really vibrant and red. And that's what you wanna see from a HRA, don't you? You want that redness. And the final thing to do is trim back the pearl weed. Now this is when the wave scissors really do come into their own. I can put them in the water without getting my whole arm wet. And also because of the wave, they can cut sort of horizontal down at the bottom of the tank. They're also good for cutting large sections in one go because again, they open wide. And with a stem like this where you don't really need to take a huge amount of care, it does mean you can get the job done really fast. Now I don't want to go too crazy on cutting back this pearl weed because it's a medium sized tank, we don't need to cut it right down to the base, I still want to keep some of the shape to it. So I'm following that arch all the way up to the top of the tank. Just by trimming off the tops, we're going to slow down the growth rate of this. It'll try and sort of spread horizontally, it'll still go up, don't get me wrong, and I'll still have to hack it back in no time at all. 
special, but we're just keeping on top of it, you know, keeping that sort of more neat look. This is a low tech nature aquarium, so I am keeping that sort of neat look. If it was a jungle scape, I'd just let it go crazy. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, one tank looking absolutely awesome again. We've not even looked at the fish, have we? Come on, I mean, I know most of you have seen, but it's worth a look every time because the stars of the show are the sparkling Grammys. Look, look at that, look at that coloration. They're obviously incredibly happy of this tank because they just look so good. We've got three in here, there's one of them. Oh, there's number two. And um, this one's smaller, I'm not sure why, just is. And where's number three? Come to the front. I did just see him, he just scooted back. So there he is at the background, There, he, here he comes. Number one, number two, and number three. Awesome little fish, by the way, guys, sparkling grammies. And I found that three in a tank this size is really good because they set up their own little territories. And you saw them, this one was just seeing him back. Doesn't want him close. Well, I'm saying he, I'm not sure what sex it is, but uh, yeah, so there's tons of hiding spaces. So they've got their own little territories. I could probably add more. Uh, I don't want to upset the balance though, it's going really, really well, there's no need to change anything. And then the bowl looked looking absolutely fire on the side here. Probably my most successful no filter bowl to date, I would say, given how well it's gone to start with, you know, the fact that it's purling look right now. I don't know if you can pick that up, it's purling because I've trimmed the plants. So they're releasing oxygen from all the points that they're cut and also the shrimp are disturbing all of this cut area as well. So that's sending up more oxygen bubble, bubbles. But that just goes to show how well it's getting on, isn't it? It's producing oxygen. The plants are growing like crazy. The fish are super healthy. Ah, oh, loving it. So it has now been 24 hours since the German blue female was added to the tank. Let's have a look and see how they're getting on, if at all. <laughs> right, so I've not just sat back and done nothing. Initially, when I put the female in, he was chasing her non-stop. I just kept seeing her trying to hide and then she'd swing into some cover somewhere. Like her, one of her favorite spots was just to zoom into there. Maybe she's still there now. Is that something I can see? No, I don't think so. Anyway, look how good he looks. He's looking so good, isn't he? Amazing color. He's just gone the deepest, deepest yellow on that front there. I, I've never seen that the whole time I've had him. Anyway, after a while, he stopped completely harassing her and I've seen them in the same places now without him just nipping and chasing. Okay, here she comes now round on this side, look. She is far less um, sort of skittish and scared in this tank as she was in the previous one. And even her colors are getting better and better all the time. Look at that, she's coming right into the foreground. And I'm actually quite close now with the camera and talking, you know, a reasonable level as well. And she's not completely scared. Look at how pink that belly is. She's definitely of breeding age, he is. There's gonna be some babies for sure. Now he'll be aware where she is because he's only just gone from this area and he isn't attacking her. So for me, that's suggesting that they're gonna get along great. She's stunning, isn't she? Look at those, look at those blues on her. Nice and thick headed as well. That stomach isn't sunken in at all like it was on the other male. And uh, yeah, she's eating great, she's looking great. Like, this is gonna work. This is gonna work, isn't it? Yeah, so you can see there she is, right there. And he is over there, so. Everything is all good. I mean, there's a chance he's not even seen her yet, but <laughs> I think he would have done. These are clever, clever fish, and they're pretty much always aware of what is in their tank. They know what's a threat, they know what's a mate. So if he didn't want her in here, we would know by now, and there would be, you know, some constant harassment going on, but that's not the case. And we've still got all five Ember Tetras doing really well, and there's also the two Bristlenose Plecos in here. Again, they're doing great. They've done a great job, by the way. Look at that wood. There's not a spot of algae on it, so they've cleaned that all off brilliantly. Oh, look, there's one of them now, look. He's just gone into that piece of wood there. I mean, that looks like it could be a cave. If we've got a male and a female, there's a chance we'd get some babies in here from them. Oh, there we go. Male on female, so he's got nice and close. And what's he doing? Luring her, oh, she's luring him into a little area that she probably feels is safe. Look, and he didn't carry on that then. He just sort of showed a little bit of interest and backed away. So yeah, we're all good, we're all good. Oh, he's going back down again. She must have wolf whistled him or something. Hey, honey, hey. <laughs> But it's not all rosy in this tank though. There is something funky going on with the uh, immersed plants, immersed meaning the ones growing out the top of the water. Now the leaves are melting back below the water level. This is actually normal. Yeah, so above water look, plants looking great. Some great sort of colors coming through on them. And then on the background ones as well, look, that is the uh, Ludwigia palustris coming through. And this is the Grandulosa, so it's more red. Uh, and there's some more right here in the foreground as well. But what happens is, once the plants have come up the top of the water column like that, 
the leaves below oh let me just adjust you see there see how they're all sort of look at that they're all melting off so what I'm going to need to do is get in there with the hose and just suck everything that's loose off because otherwise that is going to contribute to algae. You know, plants breaking down is going to create sort of ammonia and nitrite, uh, sorry, nitrate, and it's just going to increase the nutrient level of the water and we'll get algae in no time at all. So anything like that, if you see any melting back, get that stuff out your tank as quick as possible. Right then, here we go. Oh, I just nearly spilled all of that. Hang on. Right then, here we go. Good old fashioned, just a bucket and a tube. Right, siphon started, and now all I've got to do, look, is run it along the plant and it will just take off all the leaves that are loose. And if there's a good healthy leaf, it won't actually take it off at all. Oh, that one's stuck. There we go, he's gone. And another one, there we go, they're, they're not coming. <laughs> and then I'm just going to keep going around the whole lot of this, just removing plants that I can that are loose. In a minute, I'll get my hands in there as well and just thrash it around, and that'll actually dislodge any as well. I can just scoop those off the surface. Uh, most of this is coming off so easily though, as you'd expect. It's a little bit sad, I mean, because the, the plants look a bit bare, but I think for instance like this one, I'm going to put it to the back of the tank, like around, so that you can't see all that sort of openness. Yeah, that looks pretty good back there as well. And then what I'm going to do is train all the smaller plants to come in front of it so it doesn't look so sort of barren. So that's the fish all settled in and doing well. Now hopefully in the future we can get some babies. I've never been able to produce um, proper rams that are free swimming. We've had the eggs before, but didn't get it past that stage. Did with the Bolivian rams, but not with the German blues or the golden German blues or whatever. <laughs> so make sure you subscribe guys for the updates, uh, click the like button, all that stuff. I'll see you on the next one.